So hello and welcome to the sixth video then in this series learning HTML, JavaScript and CSS by making a Space Invaders game. So at the end of the last video then we had our sprite class, our um, player then in the middle of the screen, well not in the middle but positioned with uh, the position in the middle of the sprite, you know what I mean from the last video, and logging the sprite object to the screen. What I'd like to do in this video is now flesh that out a little bit. I'd actually like to create a player class that inherits from the sprite class. I explained in the previous video that we are using the classes so we can inherit from them. We'll also be inheriting from the sprite class for our bullets and also for our enemies later on. But I'd like um, to inherit from the sprite class and give then our player some particular properties that only the player will have. So we've got your individual studio code, then the first place I want to go, I'm going to go into devs.js and inside here we have our game settings object. Below the player start, I'm just going to make some space here. I'm going to add in two more properties. I'm going to add in the player start live, so the number of lives the player starts with. And I'm going to add in an object that tells us the state the player sprite is in at any one time. So that could be dead, okay, or flashing when it's been hit by an enemy, so I'll just add those in. So we have then three lives that our player starts with, and then we have OK, Dead, and Hit Flashing as the different uh, states that the player can be with throughout the game. So now what I want to do then is actually create my player sprite. So I'm going to add a new file in the JavaScript folder. And this file is called uh, player.js with a big P. Before I do anything else I'll include it inside the index.html. And now we can go about creating our player class. And here we have the important bit. We declare our class, so our new class, a player, but it extends sprite. In other words, all of the functions and the properties that the sprite class has, our player class will have as well. So we'll make a new constructor then for our player. And the constructor that we have here, we're going to take in some arguments that are quite similar actually to the sprite arguments. So we'll take in div name, um, the position, and the description of the uh, asset from our assets list that we build up in the uh, in the game manager so that we can use this to set our sprite up as well. And what we'll need to do here is when we're constructing our player we also have a constructor for the sprite so the first thing we're going to do is for all the properties that are in the sprite class I'll just open up the sprite class here with its constructor here with the image name and the pixel sizes. This is all stuff that belongs also to our player then because it inherits from the, or extends the sprite class. We're going to need to call the constructor on our sprite class to get everything set up correctly there. The way we do that is by calling super and then giving in the appropriate then arguments. And that's the super then, so the constructor called of the actual sprite. I had a few difficulties with uh, Visual Studio's IntelliSense there, forcing me to write something else. And now that we've done that, we can set up the actual properties uh, inside our player sprite. So we're going to have the lives being the game settings uh, player start lives. Then we'll have a score, a high score, and also the state our player is in when it's first created. Just clean that up a little bit. And now we've got the main constructor part done of our player. I'm just going to go to our browser, quickly refresh and check that nothing's gone particularly wrong in there. It does not like it has. And now go back to our finishing our player class. So what I'd like to do um, with our player is I'd like to be able to show the score the current score, the current lives for the player, and I need to be able to reset our player. 
for when the game restarts rather than having to redefine our player each time. So I'm going to make a reset function and in this reset function I'm going to set the state, the score and the lives back to how they should be at the start. So the state is OK, the number of lives will be 3 and the score of this player is naught. And now I'm going to have a function to increment the score of our player. And this increment score function takes an argument which is the amounts when we're playing the game depending on what enemy we've killed, how many points that is, our score will be incremented according to that number of points. And now what I need to be able to do is um, I need to be able to set the high score. So if this score is greater than the high score we've got then we need to be able to set that. And also I want to be able to set the score, the lives and the high score actually in the index.html. So to do that I'm going to need to be able to give these three divs here an individual ID for us to be able to access them. So those three divs now have some IDs that we can use from the player class to actually access and assign what the text should be inside those divs. So the first one I'll do then is the set lives function. And here we use the jQuery selector to, to select the div with the ID lives and then we can tet, set, sorry, set the text value where we'll set our x and then a string with the number of lives that we have. And every time we call this function we'll update that particular div with the number of lives uh, that, our, that our player has. By the same token we can set the score as well. So we can select the score div and set that to this.score. And then finally we can set the high score by setting a simple function saying if our score is greater than current high score then update our high score and then let's update the div as well when we're setting the high score. So the last thing that's remaining there then is just inside the increment score so whenever we do update our score just, just to call those last two functions there so that we're able to keep the interface up to date. And in fact when we reset the player so at the end of a game or something like that or the start of a new game then we want to make sure that um, once we set the lives back to 3 we set the interface then up to date. The high score of course will always uh, never be reset to 0, the score will be 0, the lives will be 3. And the last thing we actually want to do is we also want to set the position. So we want to say set position. This will be our game settings dot player start dot x Y and then true on the end there so that we set up to the game settings definition of where our player should be starting. And that's what we need to do to create our player class because all the rest of the stuff we inherit from the sprite class. So the setting the position, the updating, the drawing of the sprite itself on the screen is all done. We just add some customized functions for us that allow us to update the interface. So going back into main.js then we need to make some changes here. First of all in the reset player we're now creating a player object. We're not actually creating a sprite. And the player takes in the div name, so the player div name, that's correct. It takes in its early starting position as start x and start y. And then the last, uh, the last argument will actually be our asset itself and that's broken down then inside the construction of the player so we just need to put the asset instead of what's remaining there. And the last thing we need to do then is add the player to the board. What we will do always at the end of this function here is we'll reset the player. So that if we already had a player so we've already played a game when we come to reset player we'll just call the reset rather than making a brand new object. We don't need to, we can reuse the one that we have. So to test this then I'm going to go to the interface and hopefully we should have our sprite on the screen. And you can see that indeed we do have the sprite on the screen and now we can see it's of an object, a type, object type player. We've still got the size, we've still got the position, we've still got the anchor shift all from sprite but we've also now got the high score, the number of lives, the score, the state is zero. 
So we're a player object and we've inherited all of the information that we had when it was a sprite object. And you can imagine that we'll extend this in the same way when we start dealing with the enemy and also the bullets. One thing I would like to do is show the updating in the interface. You can see we've already got the times three, the zero and zero here. And in our index.html we don't have any values at all, so something is updating. Still it would be nice to put a little bit of code in just temporarily to see some stuff going on. So I'm going to put a couple of timeouts in here. Um, I'm going to say window set timeout. Uh, it'll call this function here. So execute incrementing score by 200 after three seconds. And then after six seconds, I'll do something else. So we'll increment the score by 200 again, reduce the lives and call set lives. So we see the lives on the screen. And then last but not least, after nine seconds, we'll reset the player so we can see effectively the screen setting itself back to normal. So I'll just go back to the browser, refresh. And now hopefully in a minute we'll see, there you go, you can see the high score and the score updating. Now we've lost a life and updated the score again. And now we've reset, so we've got three lives again. The score is zero and the high score has remained 400. So we can be fairly sure that the functions inside our player class are indeed updating the interface as we expect. And that's actually the end of this video. That's quite a lot. It's quite complicated stuff. But um, you can see now the advantages of writing classes like this. We're able to extend them and use the properties and information that we've already written before in an easy way. And our player is almost complete. Later on we'll add a couple more things in there, but we've more or less got all the functionality we need. But what would be really good, of course, is if we could move them around, and that's something we'll have a look at in the in the next video. So any problems or anything, please leave me a comment below the below the video. Any questions? Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.